Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion setting forth his sovereignty and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. Thank you, Brother Long and the congregation for joining this thing. We're very happy this morning to be back with you again. And I want to begin by thanking each of you who have been praying for me again and for the phone calls that you made to see about me, especially when I was in the hospital. I do so much appreciate it. It encouraged me greatly to know that I had you thinking about me and praying for me. Let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning and be much in prayer for those that are still sick and afflicted. <coughs> Brother Dexter will tell me that the mother's just not doing well at all. And let us continue to pray for her. But be very thankful for those whom God has raised up and uh, I'm just happy this morning that there's some over the church uh, family that I know about that's been critically sick, and they are better. Uh, I speak of the little pastor at Mobile. Uh, some of you know Brother Willis from down there. Brother Willis is back home. Uh, he's been out in Texas for over a month now, and uh, he is back home, and the doctors are giving him uh, a much better report and he's feeling better so we're thankful he's able to be back and we do know that the Lord does still uh, hear and answer prayer so let us pray this morning pray for each other pray for our little church and especially for those now who's going to be on the highway traveling and those that already are that they'll arrive back home safely and my neighbor Betty that lost her mother She's uh, having chest pains last night. I want y'all to keep praying for her. Sure. And I have a grandson. I heard on a mo motorcycle of Harry Williams. And I want your prayer for him. Thank you. Thank you, sister. We certainly will. We are awfully happy to have uh, uh, Brother Michael from up in Tennessee with us this morning. He's a member of the uh, Bethlehem Primitive Baptist Church there in Nashville, Tennessee. And we're glad to have him and of course by our little granddaughter Amber. We're happy to have them with us. So Brother Michael, please sit our prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. <coughs> please give the strength and grace and the guidance to our brother here giving us a message today. Lord, for those that have been mentioned today, please keep those in our prayers and our thoughts and guide them to where they need to go, Lord. Watch over them and as we pray for them. Lord, watch over us today for this wonderful morning as we serve you, Lord. Let us learn what we're going to learn today with the message that's going to be presented from our prayer today. Lord, with all the festivals going on today, please keep everyone safe and in your mind, Lord, that we all serve you. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mike. If you have the scriptures and you care to read along this morning, open to the book of James. To the book of James. In the book of James, chapter 1, beginning 3, he says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. 
For he that waveth is like the wave of the sea driven with the winds and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is in unstable in all of his ways. I want to pause with the reading of those verses and concentrate this morning upon this subject of let patience have her perfect work. Back when I was a very young boy, this must have been one of my dad's favorite verses. Because many times maybe he would send me to do something and maybe I couldn't do it or it didn't turn out just like I wanted to. And I'd get all angry and frustrated and he'd say, son, let patience have its perfect work. Every time he would quote that to me. And I grew up with that not really knowing what it meant, I don't think. But this past week, I have given a lot of study and thought to this one verse of scripture, but let patience have her perfect work. This morning, as I studied this lesson and I studied some of those who have gone on before me, preachers, and particularly back in uh, 102, 300 years ago, I feel that the Lord has given me such a easy, wonderful ministry compared to them. Because many of those people were put in prison. Some of them even was uh, killed on account of their testimony or their preaching and following the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever I think of my afflictions in the ministry compared to theirs, I find that the Lord has been awfully good to me. Because I've never had the fear that anyone was going to come and put me in prison or maybe take my life, as they did Stephen. They took Stephen's life, killed him because of the testimony, but he bore it with patience. Let patience have her perfect work. It may be that some of you experience the same thing that I do, that when I begin to do something and it it's just not going right. It's easily for us to just want to give up and quit. But the Lord right here says for us to let patience have her perfect work. That is, our first of all, what is patience? Maybe we ought to first say, define what patience is. In. What is patience? He said, let it have its perfect work. But what is patience to begin with? And I think the very best answer is patience is that which will help you to bear your load but yet continue on to make progress. Patience is that which you must have in time of those things that come that you can do nothing about. There are some things in life that we cannot do anything about. They, they, they come about us. And we can't do really anything about them except it will make us depressed. It will make us despondent. It'll make us all times want to just throw up our hands and quit. But now this is where what patience is. Patience is that which will help you to keep from being depressed or despondent over whatever ill or trouble that comes in your mind or in your life. Patience is that virtue that God has given every one of us that if we exercise it, 
it will help us to bear our load and as I said to keep on going instead of stopping or faltering patience is something that a lot of us don't have I often hear people say I have I want patience but I want it now we don't want to wait for the patience we want it now well that's about everything in our life today we want it now we don't want to wait for it but yet there are some things that we have to wait for because this patience is that which helps us to regulate our very lives to wait upon that which is coming but it hasn't got you yet have you ever found yourself in a depressed and despondent mood and because of that depression or despondency you begin to go back and to exercise your mind in the things that caused you to be there and immediately you will find that it pulls you further down the more you meditate upon it, the worse that it gets. The more that you think about it, the deeper it seems that it gets. But now this patience is that which will help you to understand and recall that this too shall pass. There's not too many people who realize how many times that expression is found in the Bible and this too shall pass whenever we are down whenever we despond when we are depressed we feel like this is the way it's going to be for the rest of our life we feel like that things are just not going to get any better that we'll always have to live this way well this is where patience really comes in because again it helps us to recall the fact that this too is the case. Nothing stands still. We're either going forward or we're going backwards. There's nothing that stands still in this world or in our life. Even our very lives do not stand still. There's something new in them every day maybe others have had these same ills or problems and we've never had them it's something new to us and so therefore uh, we feel like that it's about all over about to throw in the towel but James says let patience have her perfect work Patience is that which is to keep us from being depressed or despondent. Patience says that this too shall pass. Well, many times we want it to pass now. But it may be tomorrow, it may be the next day, it may be that we'll have to live with it for a little while. But the bottom line is, it will pass. Patience, again, is that which is a great virtue that God has given us. Because, again, it helps us to manifest our love to others. Patience helps us not only to manifest our love but it also helps in time of need to encourage those who are down in the valley who are depressed who are despondent patience is that that when we have the opportunity to manifest it to others our love and our help this is what patience is all about let us go to the book of Job for a moment. 
And in the book of Job chapter 1, you will find whether here's a man who God loves with all of his heart and Job loved God. And whenever things begin to happen to this man, we can see the patience of Job. You've heard the patience of Job. When they, things began to happen, when his children, all ten of them, got killed in one uh, cyclone. When the enemy came and drove off all of his uh, sheep and his camels and all of and his servants, and they took them and killed them. When all this came upon them, and the word came to Job, what do you think that Job did? The patience of Job. The Bible says that Job said that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you heard that one or two of your children got killed or died, could you take it with patience? Could you say as Job did that we receive the good things from God, shall we not also receive the evil things? Do we be like Job who says that though he slay me, I'll still trust in his name? The patience of Job. Could we hear Job also say, That the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord, and in all this Job sin not, nor charge God foolishly. The patience of Job. He had great patience <coughs> because he too knew that this was providential. There was something here that he could do nothing at all about. And that for him to get depressed and despondent over it, he was going to let patience have her perfect work. Now, you'll find that in chapter 1 and chapter of the book of Job. But then if you turn to the third chapter of the book of Job, you'll find word that it doesn't sound like the same man talking. Because here now, Job is like most of us. Job now has come to where he begins to uh, question God. Job says he wished he had have died before his mother ever brought him into the world. He said he wished he'd have died an untimely birth. Wished he'd never seen the light of day. And as you continue to read, it just gets worse and worse with Job. Where is Job's patience now? Where is he letting patience have his perfect work now? He's not. And what did it bring upon him? Despair, gloom, disappointment, despondency. And now he's down in the valley. His friends come to him and they have to put him even further down. They said, Job, you must be a great sinner. You must have a great sin hid in your life. And God is laying a chastening rod on you. Well, Job didn't think of it that way. Job said, you're just a bunch of miserable competitors. Here he was, his friends, it was supposed to be a comfort to him, became miserable competitors. And he said as much. Here you'll see a man who's reverted back to the flesh. And again, instead of thinking rationally, letting patience have its perfect work and knowing that this is God's providence and that's something else, friends. In our providence, in, in, in God's providence in this world, according to this text, we cannot alter it. We can't get around it. If God has predetermined it, it's going to come to pass. 
Do not misunderstand me. I'm not saying that everything that's falling out in this world today of sin and wickedness was predetermined. But there are some things in this life that are predetermined, my friends. And they're going to come to pass just as God purposed it to be so. Nothing can alter it. Nothing can change it. Because it's been casted into the lot. And I'll assure you that the same God who had a plan before the foundation of the world has the power and the ability to carry out that plan right here in the world. And he is doing so and will do so. And this is why that James admonishes us to be patient. Be patient in whatever comes upon us. Let patience have her perfect work. Well, again, we can see that while Job is letting patience have its perfect work in understanding that this is all of God, he said not to charge God foolishly. We can see in the third chapter where that he lost that spirit and for a while he was in despair, despondency, and depression. This is what these evils will do for us in this life. This is what they have done for a mighty lot of people in this life. It's brought them down to a state of wanting to even to take their life. And sometimes they do. They'll literally take their life commit suicide because they don't want to face tomorrow. They don't want to live any longer in this condition. And we can see how many there are today who are despondent. They're not happy. In a land of America where everything is so plentiful, the Lord has given us such a good life. <clears throat> There's so much material things to enjoy. And yet, there are so many people who are so depressed and so despondent. Why? Again, because they did not let patience have its perfect work. Now, when we use the word perfect, I understand it not to perfection as God is perfect, but I understand it to be that which is complete, that which is complete within one. He said not only let patience have its perfect work, why? That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Friends, we would have to be patient to be thoroughly entire and not wanting nothing. For most of us continue to want on. It doesn't matter how much we have, doesn't matter how much we can upgrade our life, it seems that we're never satisfied or happy. We're still wanting something. But he said that patience have a perfect work and that we not be wanting anything. Wanting nothing, he said. That is, we be not lacking anything. Well, this patience again is that which you get us over the rough places. This patience is that which you keep us from being, as I said, downcast, despondent, and ill. But if we don't have this patience, and I assure you that it's not one of my best virtues either, because whenever I get all sick and ill and down and out and can't hardly go and do my work and can't do the Lord's work and can't 
serve you like I'd like to, I get awfully impatient. And that impatient is then what brings on that gloom and that doom. But when I can remember to let patience have its perfect work, that is, that I try to not alter, but I just wait upon it. Oh, it may not come today, it may not come tomorrow, but it may be the next day. You see, this is a lot in our life that goes on. That why we want it now, it may be two or three days or a week from now. You know why I think the Lord allows these days to come upon us? He said to try our faith. Did you notice that? To try our faith. Faith, my friends, is a gift of God. In the book of Galatians, you will find in the fifth chapter, where there's nine parts of the spirit that is uh, mentioned. Love, peace, joy, happiness, long-suffering, and faith. Faith is the seventh part of the Spirit. Without faith, no man can please God. And the reason for that is because he doesn't have the Spirit. Faith is a fruit of the Spirit. As I said, it's the seventh part. And if a person's got faith, then he knows that he's been born again of the Spirit of God. And if you've been born again of the Spirit of God, you can assure, be assured, that that faith is going to be tried. It's going to be tried as by fire. And it'll be according to how that we pass that test as to how strong that our faith really is. Some people have such strong faith they would make me sometimes kind of feel like uh, ashamed of myself and my little faith. I've seen some in sickness, some ready to die. And their faith would be so strong in the Lord that all they could think about is the Lord's will be done. I've seen others in lying on a deathbed who were scared to death because they had no faith. My friends, faith will be tested. It will be tried. And whenever it's tested and tried, then again, that's where our patience is going to come in. I wonder sometimes if those who are not continually sick all the time, if it's not that their faith is being tried. Their patience is being tried. To see if they're going to meet the test. You know, the Bible said that even the Lord himself was tempted. And the word tempt, I think, means to be tried. Because the Bible says that God tempted Abraham. But we know that he didn't tempt him with the same uh, definition that we give the word tempt. But it meant that he tried it. He tried his faith. Whenever he said, take your son, your only son, and go up in the mountain, offer him upon the altar for a sacrifice. Abraham got up early the next morning and did exactly what the Lord said and took him up to Mount Moriah and was ready to take his life. The Lord stayed his hand and said, that's enough, because the Lord had tried this man's faith, and he passed the test. Many times there will be things that come to us, and it will try our faith. How are we going to pass the test? Are we going to give up? Are we going to give in? Are we going to stand strong in that faith with patience? 
saying, as it were, that's all right, Lord. Whatever you bring upon me, let it come. I'll endure it with patience. Endure it with patience, and I'll let patience have its perfect work. In this way, we'll be able to meet the test of not only the faith, but also of the patience. Brethren and sisters, this world is hard to live in. It's getting worse every day. And the person who's got this patience that he can let have its perfect work, that is, see that patience to the end. The person's got that patience who can help them to carry their load, but yet make progress and go on. If we don't do that, then we are going to stop. We are going to falter, and life will be pretty much up. But to those who continue on, going before the throne of God, pleading their cause before Him. Lord, whatever it is, whatever I have to endure, whatever my faith has to stand, let me not waver. But let me be strong in this faith depending upon thee knowing that you, God, is the one that gave you the faith and now that I've added to my faith, what did he say? He said, add to your faith what? Virtue, knowledge, patience. This is what we're to add to this faith. What is wisdom? What is faith? Well, wisdom, my friends, is to know how to use that knowledge that you have gained. That's wisdom. A person may have ever so much head knowledge, but if he doesn't know how to use it, then he is not going to be very wise. But if he has the wisdom to know how to use that knowledge and use it in patience, then I'll assure you that he will see you through. I hope as time continues on that the Lord will bless, will bless each one of you in your life and whatever it might be that comes upon you that you can have patience and then you can let it have its perfect work. This morning, this is so elementary, I hate to even mention it. But this morning, I was trying to put these little buttons right here on my shirt. And my old arthritic fingers just seemed to wooden button them things stop. And so I worked with this for a while and I couldn't get it, so I thought, well, I'll just be patient here. So I'll work on this one. So I got over on that other one and it didn't go any better. And I stood there and I about give out trying to button these two little old buttons on my shirt. And that's why that this text came to me so strong. Let patience have our perfect work. So I just quit. Went on and buttoned up the rest of it in my sleeves and come back and they went in just like that. Both of them. Patience. I could have got all aggravated and wouldn't have got another shirt without buttons on it, I suppose. But I guess, as I said, this is so elementary, but I guess that's what I mean by letting patience have its perfect work. If it doesn't work in the first you can't get it to work to begin with then just wait a little while 
then go back and try it again. And in most cases you'll find maybe your second or third try, it'll work. But you've got to have patience. If you don't, you're going to get all frustrated and have a thought that I thought, now if I take my knife and I cut them two buttons off of there, I wouldn't have to fool with these things anymore. Well, see, that's frustration. That's how that patience had his perfect work. So I hope this morning that you understand my little message and word that I'm coming from. I'm trying to encourage you because we all, meet these kind of things in this life to where that we're going to have to exercise patience or we're going to be full of despondency, depression, and even frustration. There's nothing that will frustrate you worse than to try to do something and can't do it. You come back and you still can't do it. And so then you begin to think, well, it's going to always be this way, but it won't. As I said, keep remembering the scripture goes with it. And this too shall pass. Let's sing this a song, Brother Long. Sound like the weather's going to get bad here in just a few minutes if it hasn't already. Let's sing this a song and open the doors of the church. If there's one desire home of the church, you come while we <coughs> sing this song, and if not, then we'll go and have our lunch together in just a moment. What number do you have? Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.